our next speaker will speak about the same topic. It's also about the digital ministry. Mr. Brinstone Carvalho. Mr. Carvalho is a full-time member of the media ministry in the Archdiocese of Mumbai. Please, Mr. Carvalho. If you are wondering why my face looks familiar, it's because I am not wearing my white shirt that I have been wearing over the last uh, seven days. Um, your eminences, your excellencies, dear bishops, religious priests, and esteemed guests, thank you for giving me the opportunity to address you. In the short presentation of mine, I would like to lay emphasis on the use of creative catechesis, which also includes content, in digital ministry. The church has always taken a positive approach to digital media. The pastoral instruction on the means of social communication underlines the church sees media as gifts of God in which in accordance with his providential design unite men in brotherhood and so help them to cooperate with his plan of salvation. Furthermore, the great St. Pope John Paul II declared, it is not enough to use media simply to spread the Christian message and the church's authentic teaching. It is also necessary to integrate that message into the new culture created by modern communications. Therefore, doing that is all the more important today since not only does media strongly influence what people think and act upon, but also to a very great extent, human experience itself is an experience of media. Pope Francis very boldly says, the digital world can be an environment rich in humanity, a network not of wires, but of people. Now the church in Asia is no stranger to the power of the internet, the power of media, and of course the power of technology. During the COVID-19 pandemic, the church took digital adaptation to a whole new level. There was a widespread application of digital technology to the Eucharist, worship, pastoral care, discipleship, and missions. While the churches rushed to create digital provisions with little afforded time to training and of course deep reflection, most of us, most of the church, largely acted in accordance with their theological instincts. However, technology and the format of media use changes the rules of play of human interaction. How then can the church in Asia today, moving ahead of the pandemic, offer new ways of confronting people with the message of the gospel? Communication in and by the church is essentially communication of the good news of Jesus Christ. And just like how Jesus connected with his people in his time, the church today needs to connect with her people in the means that they understand. Through storytelling, the use of using the power of metaphors, and the explicit need to be relevant to the times. All of these together form the core of creative catechesis. I work in the Catholic Communication Center, the media wing of the Archdiocese of Bombay, and our motto is communion through communication. Using this motto and creative catechesis, we spread the mandate and the love of Christ through word, worship, and witness. Our main goal is to evangelize the lay faithful using creative catechesis. Now, creative catechesis can be done through various modes, static posts, infographic, short videos, and podcasts. The essential purpose of creative catechesis is meant to take something complex and break it down into something simple 
for us lay people to understand without losing any essence or meaning of what is being conveyed. This is what I believe the church in Asia needs to be working in the way forward. May I remind you that creative catechesis is not only a medium to communicate with the youth, but in fact, of peoples of all ages. Allow me to share with you a few examples of how we in Bombay use uh, creative catechesis effectively. The Ten Commandments, as you all know, helps us with an examination of conscience. But perhaps a more relevant and creative ex uh, and personal examination of conscience with Jesus may bring about a change of heart indeed. Saints are the pillar of our church. Short, selective, specific material on saints help the faithful to get to know more information and key information about the saints. Furthermore, we can also Im inspire the faithful with powerful quotes from these saints. These are all simple static posts. An example of a short video is right here. This is something that we did for Lady Sunday where we acknowledge the contributions of all those who serve in the church. As phones are the first and the last things we, we look at during the day, perhaps mobile wallpapers are a, nice, are a nice reminder of God's presence in our lives. Here is an example of using simple daily computer commands to encourage the people to follow the footsteps of Jesus. Control C, Control S, something that all of us are aware about. Creative catechesis can also help sow seeds of vocation. Here is a short promo video of a vocation promotion campaign done recently where priests from the Archdiocese of Bombay on a road trip together share experience during their formation years and ongoing journey in priesthood. I'm Father Byron. I'm Father Nigel. I'm Father Ryan. I'm Father Baptist. I'm Father Joshua. I'm Father Ashwin. I'm Father Omar. And then you send your disciples into the world asking them to go forth and make disciples of all nations. Creative catechesis also allows you the freedom to tackle sensitive issues in a light-hearted way. This is the campaign that we run during the season of Advent. And finally, as a last example, creative catechesis helps you to stay relevant to the times. These are posts we've created with the latest trends on social media. I'm sure most of you have an iPhone, the triple camera, and of course, the 10-year challenge. Now, if you didn't understand the last two slides, or perhaps a few other slides, then it's a concern and brings me to a very, very important point. This is a challenge that needs your attention. The clergy, priests, bishops, and religious need to know and understand, at least at a fundamental level, the purpose and the beauty of social media. And more than that, 
the clergy needs to be aware of the latest digital trends and happenings. Perhaps even some form of training on the use of digital media. And more importantly, take serious actions to implement its use. The sheep are on social media. The shepherds are also ought to be. The shepherds need to keep up with the times. But I guarantee you that the clergy is not alone in this and there is help available in the form of Catholic media professionals in your parishes and the formation of communication cells in parishes and dioceses. My experience of working in the digital ministry in the Archdiocese of Bombay is a fulfilling one. It is not about the likes, the comments, the reach, the shares, or the number of views, but the sheer passion of sharing the values and the teachings of the church in a creative way. I would like to emphasize on the fact that creative catechesis is not a substitute to physical participation in the sacraments, but only a method to further revitalize digital evangelization. The future is digital. There is no doubt about this. Honestly, I would have never imagined receiving a spiritual communion. What's next? We have no idea. Without doubt, the task at hand is easier said than done. The quantum of work, the time, the effort and costs involved are huge. Additionally, there are plenty of challenges, not only uh, in developing creative catechesis, but also consuming them. For example, negative comments and feedback, sometimes political pressure, low internet bandwidth, lack of interest, and the great challenge of tackling fake news. But I believe there is hope, and there is hope when I look at the bishops and cardinals out here. Asia looks to you to lead the way forward, for the priests and the lay faithful. I'd like to conclude this presentation with a key quote from St. Paul VI, perhaps because of whom we, are, we have the FABC and are here today. Pope Paul VI said, the church would feel guilty before the Lord if it failed to use media for evangelization. And therefore, I sincerely hope that the church in Asia journeying together with her peoples and with this general conference, recognizes the need to keep up with technology and social media, and also strives to ensure its application in dioceses and parishes. I thank you once again for your opportunity to address you, for your time and for your attention. God bless. Thank you, Mr. Calvario, for your presentation, for reminding, uh, reminding us for the beauty and the promise of the social media, but also the challenge we are facing in this area. Thank you very much.